Salam, shalom, peace be with you. That's where we're going to start this show because this is one of these great little news clips that I want to share with you. I heard it on Democracy Now! originally, but now I'm studying to the New Republic, May 15th, 2024, to be precise. There was recently a Biden appointee, and one of the reasons why this became some news is this woman named Lily Greenberg, an Interior Department staffer, is notably one of the first Jewish members of the administration to resign in protest over what I think she herself is calling a genocidal war in Gaza and our support for this thing. Remember, we're given like buckets of money, buckets of munitions, you know, and it's a big subsidy to the military industrial complex. I mean, you go, however you feel about this thing to support this. We are responsible for this slaughter happening. And maybe you're like me and you spoke out to a few people about it, but, you know, we're sitting back while this is happening. Well, Lily Greenberg just made this great quote, I thought, where she said something like, Biden, or we could say the administration, whatever, is making Jews the face of what she called the American war machine. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. It's not a yeah thing. It's terrible. Um, so, first of all, though, I want to say, hey, yeah, Biden, you know, boo, I don't like what you're doing, but I'm not going to be voting Trump. Okay, look, Trump is like, hey, we're not letting in any Palestinian terrorist refugees, and he's the guy who said finish the job, and he was friendly with Netanyahu and all these so called hawks or right wingers in Israel. And, and I just think this is so important to share with you, again, another Jewish voice opposed to this bloodshed, this slaughter, what looks to me like an ethnic cleansing, because people like to kid themselves that this is like anti-Semitic opposing it or, or you know, you're not standing with Israel, quote unquote. It's not like that. In fact, these people like her, and, I, and I've cited to you from one of my first shows I did on this whole Gaza situation, I made sure I cited Israeli Jewish people who oppose the invasion right at the outset. Ofer Kasif, Jewish Knesset member and communist, I'm going to tell you because give credit where credit's due. But these guys, they got no airplay in the beginning. They're barely getting airplay now. And they are creating this false media narrative that, that's just leading people down, leading the Jewish people and, and, and the U.S. of A., down this like madness that is clearly set up to backfire on America and on Jewish people and it's horrible slaughter of these Palestinian people, what they're going through. Now, I really liked it in a sense. I mean, I looked at this, she sort of, by calling it the American war machine, what she's doing here, I think, I don't know her, but I think she's doing here is trying to say, hey, it's, this isn't what some people who are trying to claim that, you know, we who oppose this slaughter are anti-Semitic. It's not Jewish people using America to do this. It's, it's, see, I don't like it because she's putting it as America. I would say it's the military industrial complex. It's all this buckets of money going to that defense industry. I mean, and I've shown you before all the money and donations going there. That's at least in part behind this. And then we should question what is our war machine? What has it historically been used for? You know, is it really serving us the people? To what extent is it serving us the people? And to what extent is it supporting certain dominant vested business interests? Because remember, all these wars, it always seems that the fossil fuel petrochemical industry comes out on top. And we really should question, you know, yeah, you got some people in Israel who really love this. And, and I get it that a lot of Israelis, the majority of them are going along with this, as are a lot of Jewish people. But it's similar to how a lot of my fellow Americans, especially white Americans, and, you know, hey, I, most people are going to look at me and say, that's a white guy. They, we, if you want to put it that way, supported the invasion of Iraq. And I was out there saying, don't do it, don't do it. And they were all like, Saddam's got to go, Saddam's got to go. It's the same thing going on now in the Jewish community. It's the one-sided media narratives silencing the voices like Ofer Kasif, like now this woman from, from the Biden administration who, who oppose it, that are just leading people down this path of death and destruction that is not going to work out well in the big picture for, for Jewish people, and obviously not for Palestinians. Because one of the things happening here, I've heard a lot of voices on public radio. That's mostly what I listen to. Better source of news than Fox. I'm, I'm dissing it, yes, but I'm dissing the other outlets even more. Saying things like, just casually saying things like, we can live with the Palestinians. I thought we could. That, that is a quiet call for ethnic cleansing. I have played for you Herzog's quote too, which was, how could you not take it as ethnic cleansing? It's an entire nation out there 
that is responsible. It's not true. This rhetoric about civilians not, we, we're not aware, not involved, it's absolutely not true. So we are supporting ethnic cleansing. And you could say, yeah, in a way, we're supporting ethnic cleansing in the Ukraine-Russia conflict because yeah, maybe a lot of people don't want to hear that one. But look, that was a lot of fomenting Ukrainian nationalism going back to the Soviet days under Reagan as a way to break up those commies, break up those socialists. And, and that gets us back to what's, how is our military being used? Whose interest is it really serving? It's serving this anti-socialist agenda, which really you could say is an anti-public sector agenda because you want to keep things open for these big, vast private interests. And we can call it capitalism, but it's a capitalism that doesn't even work for average people. And you really got to question, hey, ain't it weird how a lot of these right wingers, quote unquote, who are out there carping about George Soros, a Jewish businessman, saying he's bringing immigrants in here, trying to poison our blood, as use Trump's words now, poison our blood with immigrants, that it really, this does all feel like part of an ethnic national thing. So why would Israel, these Jewish people, who, you know, been picked on, harassed, murdered, driven out of Europe, why are they going along with, with ethnic nationalism? In a sense, what I think, I think Greenberg here, is trying to say, hey, people, wake up. This is like a setup, right? It, you could even imagine this as a continuation of the Crusades. I mean, think about it. What's the history of how Israel came into being? Well, part of it, Zionism was there before Hitler, okay, agreed, but it was a trickle. It was small. It was more of a positive movement. The Nazis come in, you know, start killing all the Jewish people. They want to get them out of Germany, get them out of Europe. Israel is a place to go. And and it, so it's, it's then in a sense like sending, you know, hey, we don't want you here. Now go there and start killing these other people. And if you want to analogize it to the Crusades, well, think about the Crusades, right? You know, we had so-called Christian Crusaders going in there thinking they're killing Muslims. Really, a lot of them were killing Byzantine Christians. That's another story. They couldn't pull it off. And then it's almost like now all these Europeans start going to, to the Middle East again to take back the Holy Land but it's Jewish people doing it this time because the Christians weren't pulling it off. And I, I just think that her her quitting is, is really historic and really important. And I was thinking a bit on the fly here, but I hope you at least found it interesting. And if you did, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel. You have clicked that notification bell. You are liking, you are commenting. And this ain't easy putting these shows together, especially when you got a lot of other responsibilities in your life. So it'd be really cool if you could also join those couple of patrons. I got a Patreon and hopefully someday I'll make the Patreon page a little more fun and interesting for you. And as always, until next time, Shalom, Salam, peace be with you. Let's add in Namaste.